welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Here's your weekly update. Do you love to sing but are too afraid to do it in public? Why not lip sing it? On February 26th in Grace Hall, bring your friends and sign up to lip sing to your favorite song. You can perform as a solo, duo, or a group by signing up in the SEAL office. Prizes will be awarded, so dress up, create a dance, and get ready to show your stuff. This event runs from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Also happening on February 26th, there will be a Love the Skin You're In Fashion Festival at Villanova University. This festival will contain students putting on a show to portray how fashion can be used to promote self-esteem and self-acceptance. This fashion show will run from 7 to 9.30 p.m. For more information, visit campusphilly.org. On Tuesday, February 19th, the college celebrated Founders Day in the mansion with guest speaker, Reverend Fred Kamer. Let's check in with Christy to hear more. Founders Day is Cabrini's way of honoring Sister Ursula Infante, the founder of the school. The college honors Sister Infante by holding a presentation by a scholar or activist who embodies the Cabrinian way of life. Reverend Fred Kammer is an expert in Catholic social justice and acclaimed author of the book Doing Faith Justice. Thanks for checking in with us. I'm Christy Murphy, on location for location. That was your trip around the block. So Kevin, were you there the other night to watch the basketball game? Absolutely, it was a great game as the Cavaliers come away with the win in the semifinal, so they're back in the final for the fifth straight year. Let's take a look at sports this week. The Cabrini men's basketball team advanced to their fifth straight CSAC final with a 90 to 77 win over Newman University on Tuesday night. Location caught up with members of the team after the game. Let's take a look. Tight game. Can't be sitting out in, in tight situations. They need me, so. Take every game, one game at a time, and we try to use the same energy every game, and right now there's no excuses. You lose and you're done. So focus is defense, and we, basically we can't lose. Cavaliers shot 54% from the field in the second half supporting Coach Khan's 200 career win. Well, at a half we just really talked about sticking what was working. I thought we did a good job early in the game, kind of got away from what was working for us. So it was just a matter of playing calm, playing to stick with what's working, and uh, you know not, not change the game plan in the middle for no reason. So. Sophomore Aaron Walton Moss took over in the second half, making basket after basket in the paint for the Cavaliers. Walton Moss finished with a career high of 30 points, just short of a triple-double with 12 rebounds and 8 assists. He lacked off and started getting a little selfish, but then at the end of the game, everybody passed the ball enough to, to get the victory, so I think we did good. Co coach Kahn, tough coach, he gonna, he gonna, we're going to make us get after this. This is one and done. We can't lose, so we're going to make us go hard. Team chemistry is great 99.9% .9 of the time. Uh, it's usually when we struggle when it's not good, so I was really, really pleased with all those, with, with, their, with their effort in that regard. Cavs will host the Keystone College Giants in the CSAC Final on Friday night at 7 p.m. A CSAC Final berth is on the line for the Lady Cavs on Wednesday as they host Keystone College. A win would put the Lady Cavs in Saturday's CSAC Final against the winner of the Marywood Gwen and Mercy game also on Wednesday. The Flyers rebounded from a horrible weekend that featured losses to the Devils and Canadians by pounding the New York Islanders 7-0 on Monday. Ilya Brizgalov recorded his first shutout of the season, while Claude Giroux and Danny Briere each scored two goals. 
The Flyers are back on the ice on Wednesday against the Pittsburgh Penguins, wrapping up a six-game road trip. After entering the All-Star break following a two-point loss to the Milwaukee Bucks, the Sixers return on Wednesday night in Minnesota against the Timberwolves. The schedule doesn't get any easier for the Sixers as they face the Miami Heat and New York Knicks this weekend. Tune in next week for recaps of the CSAC final as well as updates on Philly sports. Now here's Molly with your trip across the nation. The five-week strike by the New York City School Bus Drivers Union has ended. Nearly 9,000 bus drivers will be heading back to work this week, and about half a million students will now have transportation to school. Mike Carcillo, president of the Bus Drivers Union, said that the union decided to end the five-week strike after the New York City mayor decided to revisit the school bus transportation system. The misery aboard the Carnival cruise ship Triumph ended last week when the crippled vessel was towed to an Alabama port. It all started six days prior when a leak in the fuel oil line in one of the ship's engines began leaking oil. The oil hit a hot surface starting a fire in the engine room, which caused the ship's engines to shut down, leaving it without running water or working bathrooms. The 3,000 passengers and 1,000 crew members spent nearly a week waiting to be rescued as food and fresh water ran low and tempers flared. According to CNN, passenger Cassie Terry described the ship as a floating toilet, a floating petri dish, and a floating hell in a lawsuit filed against the carnival, unspecified damages related to the cruise. After vowing revenge for what he called unjust firing, a former Los Angeles Police Department officer and former Navy sailor committed suicide during a tense standoff with police. Chris Dorner, who authorities believed to have killed four people, was the subject of a region-wide manhunt last week. John McMahon, chief sheriff of the Los Angeles Police Department, says he believes the investigation is over. Dorner's body was found in a cabin in Big Bear Lake, a mountain resort 100 miles outside of L.A., after he barricaded himself in the cabin, which caught fire during the standoff. The former LAPD officer who had a vendetta against cops shot himself while the cabin burned. Recently, Cabrini has experienced bias-related incidents. Locations Hever La Pergola sat down with the Director of Student Diversity Initiatives and the President of the Black Student Union to learn about the issues and what has been done in response. This year, the campus has um, it seems to have had an increase in what we call bias-related incidents on campus. And a bias-related incident really is when someone is targeted based on maybe their race or their gender or their sexual orientation or preference. This year, currently, I am the president of Black Student Union. We're working with SGA, so I'm working with the SGA president, Mike Pontario, and I'm also working with the dean of students, George Strout. I think it's very important for the students to have a bigger role in, you know, talking about how we make everybody aware of what is happening and also what's, what's accepted. The dialogue was basically an open forum in which we brought all the students and faculty together. And what we did was basically go briefly over what happened in the situation and got people's feelings from it. And we took everyone's perspective and then we take all their ideas on how we can basically prevent this from happening in the future. So as a college, we have to determine um, not only is there any value in sharing the information, but also is the information actually credible and valid. Um, what we also saw this year was that most of the incidents were anonymous. So if the college doesn't have a person to hold accountable, then um, it may appear as if nothing has been done or communicated. But really, nothing is, we're not able to do anything or communicate because we don't have a person to hold accountable. If you would like to learn more or get involved, contact Stephanie Reed or the Office of Student Diversity Initiatives. I'm Heather Lapragola on location for location. Now back to the studio. That was your trip across the nation. So Christine, what's going on in entertainment this week? Well, this past Sunday, I went to go see Grammy Award winning Mumford & Sons in concert. So let me tell you more about it. I was fortunate enough to go see Mumford & Sons play February 17th live at the Susquehanna Bank Center in Camden, New Jersey. And there is definitely a reason the band's sophomore album, Babel, won this year's Grammy Award for Album of the Year. That will be the group's intricate instrumentation matched by its passionate delivery and thoughtful songwriting. Last summer, Mumford handpicked the band Haim to tour with them. The all-female band features three sisters from Southern California. 
the trio makes music that rocks and is refreshingly different. Haim was recently chosen as BBC Sound of 2013, a title rarely given to an American band. The girls have also been targeted as the band to watch in 2013 by a number of publications such as the LA Times, Teen Vogue, and LA Weekly. Last year, the sisters self-released their debut single, Forever, and they will be releasing their debut album later this year on Columbia Records. That was your entertainment update. Now here's Nicole with your trip around the world. President Obama's fourth State of the Union speech last week focused on the economy and building a better future for the middle class, including a push to raise the federal minimum wage. The president proposed increasing the minimum wage from $7.25 to $9 an hour and then indexing it to inflation. The move would be a benefit to working class families but may anger small businesses that worry about it driving up their costs. For the next six weeks, President Obama is going on the road to drive home his economic message. Olympian Oscar Pistorius wept in court as his defense lawyer read the athlete's account of how he shot his girlfriend to death on Valentine's Day, claiming he had mistaken her for an intruder. Prosecutors, however, believe that the double amputee known as the Blade Runner, intentionally and mercilessly shot and killed 29-year-old model Riva Steenkamp as she cowered inside a locked bathroom. In an affidavit, Pistorius said he felt vulnerable because he did not have his prosthetic legs on him when he fired at the bathroom door. According to the Associated Press, Pistorius then said he realized Steenkamp was not in his bed. He put on his prosthetic legs, tried to kick down the door, then bashed it in with a cricket bat to find Steenkamp shot inside. He said, she died in my arms. Pistorius apparently sobbed during the hearing, during which the prosecution argued that his motive was simply to kill. The hearing will resume later this week. Thanks for catching up with us. For Location Weekly News, I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Molly Fox. Be sure to stay up to date with us this week by going on our social media sites. Simply search Location News. Have a great week, Cabrini.